Hey guys, it's Veronica and it's Saturday morning and I'm in my pajamas but I kind of wanted to film a video today because I have some free time so I thought that I would do kind of a bookshelf tour about all of my Korean books and textbooks so if that's interesting to you I hope you <laughs> keep watching if not I'll see you in the next video all right, um, here's all of my books right behind me. So I'm gonna turn the camera around and show you all my books. Okay, let's go. Okay, so here's my entire Korean textbook collection. I've already counted and I have 28 books here. And I've owned even more than this, but usually when I use up a book, I tend to get rid of it. So yeah. So this is all I have at the moment, but I'm just going to go from left to right, smallest to biggest. And I won't be pulling out the books unless I really want to show you something inside. Um, so the first book here is called Happy Illust Memo, and this is a little book about doodles. And it's just a Korean book that I picked up. Next I have My Daily Routine in Korean, and this is a talk to me in, in Korean book, and like the title says, it's about daily routines, so it's got vocab and uh, phrases related to daily routines. Next I have the Jeju Bus Trip. This is actually, I'll pull this one out, this is actually promotional material made by Innisfree, it's a little booklet, and um, it does have stuff in here promoting their products. As you can see here um, but it's also got a lot of travel information about Jeju-do and some really cute pictures so I've held on to it for for reading next I have K-pop Korean and this book it breaks down several uh, popular K-pop songs it goes into the lyrics and picks out some uh, key vocabulary and grammar points and kind of explains them, which is a really cool concept. The only problem is that I'm actually not interested in a majority of the songs that are in this book, so I don't know. I bought this because I thought it would be fun to learn through Korean songs, but then I'm realizing I, I don't really like the songs that they chose, so yeah. I don't know if I will eventually get to that book or not. Next I have Harry Potter number one, the Sorcerer's Stone, and uh, yeah, obviously you know what Harry Potter is, I hope. Um, I, yeah, I hope to be able to read the series one day, but starting with baby steps, starting with the first book. And the interesting thing about Korean Harry Potter books is that, I guess due to the translation, the it becomes much lengthier, so they tend to break up the Harry Potter books into volumes. Um, so yeah, if you, like for example, if you bought this in paperback, you'd maybe buy two or three volumes just for a Sorcerer's Stone, but I like having it in one single book, so I bought the hardcover. Next I have 2000 Essential Korean Words for Beginners. So this is a vocabulary book, as it says, for uh, beginners, beginner level. I haven't gotten through very much of it, I've gotten up to here. Um, but yeah, I, I kind of know quite a lot of the words in here, so it's a little bit tedious for me, but there's actually still quite a lot of words that I don't know, so it's still good to um, study from for me anyways. And I have this like strip of paper here because I was trying to color code my books at one point in time, but I kind of thought it was a dumb idea after a while, so I need to remove these. Next I have, uh, it says 52. <laughs> I always automatically say numbers in English. Uh, 52 여행. 남몰래 아껴둔 서울 경기 214. <laughs> so, this book is a travel guide for Seoul and it has uh, different restaurants, festivals, uh, places to see all around Seoul and it's broken up into kind of like courses so each week you would do a different course and it has different locations like in on a map that you would like follow the map and um, it goes according to all of the weeks of the year so if it's a earlier week and it's in the winter time then it'll recommend things appropriate for the winter if it's more in the middle of the book and 
it's summertime, then it'll recommend activities for the summer. So it's kind of cool. And actually, this book is not mine. It's my boyfriend's, but he left it here in case I want to flip through it. And sometimes we get ideas for things to do when we look through this book. Next, I have a kind of comic book, I guess. It's called Penguin Loves Mev, and it's um, in the UK number two. So this is actually a very popular webtoon series that's been going on for quite a long time. I don't know if it's still being published or not, um, but a, a while ago it was quite popular, and it's about a Korean girl and an English guy and their international relationship, and this book is supposed to be really good, or not this book, this series is supposed to be really good for Korean learners because she spends a lot of time explaining Korean words and Korean culture to her partner, so um, you can learn a lot through this webtoon. But um, I kind of want to start from the beginning. This is obviously somewhere in the, in, the in the middle of their journey, so I want to start from the beginning because I think it'll be more interesting that way. This book is also a kind of comic book, but it was made and designed for Korean learners. Um, it's called Diary of Dana in Korea, and it's about a girl who is an exchange student in Korea, and it's just all about her adventures in Korea, and it's broken down into different topics of things that foreigners might want to learn about. And it has some vocabulary and phrases and culture points in here as well. And it also comes with um, MP3 files so you can listen to the dialogues being read to you. Next I have Topic in 30 Days. This is a just a big vocabulary book and it's designed so that you can study all of the vocabulary over the course of 30 days but it's really it's a ton of vocabulary and yeah I don't think a normal human can finish everything in 30 days so um, I'm holding on to it because it's really useful vocabulary but I'm not doing it in 30 days. Heck no. Uh, next I have a book called Adentown Mom Manduki. I, I actually has a bit of a longer title, but it's the main title. And uh, this is a exercise book, actually. So I bought this on G Market. I bought it for myself because I'm trying to get healthy. I'm also trying to study Korean at the same time. So I thought this was like kind of killing two birds with one stone. And it's got some exercise tips, diet tips, exercise guide, like a like an exercise schedule sort of, and um, just information about how women's bodies work and what kind of why they recommend the exercises that they recommend and how exercise works on the body and stuff like that. So it's got a lot of useful information in here that hopefully I can um, come to understand one day. Next I have New Topic 2 Essential Grammar 150. And this is just also a big book of grammar, essential for the topic two. And the cool thing, I will pull this one out very briefly. The cool thing about this one is that all of the, I mean, it has a lot of questions, like practice questions, so that's very useful. And all of the grammar points are rated with a star rating. So the higher the rating, the more likely this grammar point will appear on the test so you can kind of prioritize what you need to learn based on the ratings. So I thought that was kind of a cool um, thing that they, a cool feature that they added to that book. Oh gosh. Oh my little guy. Okay, next I have Talk to Me in Korean Workbook Level 4. I've done 1, 2, and 3 and this is one of those books that once I finish it, I get rid of it. So when I finish this one, it's going in the recycling bin. The next two books are pretty similar, they're by the same publisher. It's The Test Guide to the New Topic and The Complete Guide to the Topic 2, Intermediate and Advanced. Um, I bought the white one first, because it was, I don't know, I don't know why, I just did. Just how it happened in my life. <laughs> I bought the white one first, and I thought it would be more useful than it was, but all it does really is explain the question types very briefly. And the rest of the book are practice tests. But this one goes into a lot more detail and talks more about like things you need to know for the test, has a lot more example questions, as well as having an example test or a practice test, sorry. And it also has a special like writing guide, so it has tips about how to write essays. So I think this one is more useful, but I'm gonna save this one obviously to make use of the practice tests. 
Next I have Korean grammar in use. Sorry, excuse this little like stuff that's stuck on here because this was also due to my brilliant color coding idea, but I gave up on that. So I think if you say Korean, you'll definitely have heard of these books. They're super famous. They're super um, useful, of course. Um, I've finished everything in the beginner book and I do want to review it. And then after that, I can start the intermediate. Next, I have useful Chinese characters for learners of Korean. So this is just a book full of really common hanja. And it shows you the Chinese character, the pronunciation in Korean, as well as the translation into native Korean. So I just thought this would be really useful, even if I don't memorize the character, like the shapes of the characters themselves or how to write them. At least knowing those word stems is really helpful for being able to understand more Korean words that are based on Chinese words. Next, I have two books from the Get It Korean series. I, I think these books are really cool. They're 13,000 won a piece. So buying them all would certainly add up to a lot of money but buying them one at a time once in a while is not so bad and they have books for uh, every different kind of skill so they have a um, listening book a speaking book reading writing and grammar and then it's obviously broken down into levels and I don't remember what level it goes to I think maybe six five or six and right now I'm doing level two for reading and writing because those are my weakest points. Next I have two books by Korean Made Easy. One is the Intermediate Grammar Book and this one is Vocabulary. Um, these were hand-me-downs so I got this from a friend who actually already left Korea, so sad. Um, but yeah, she didn't really get to use them very much so she passed them down to me. Next I have this book called and it's about handwriting. Um, I guess maybe I'll pull this one out and show it. So it's just a handwriting practice workbook, which I've had this book for quite a long time. I don't know when exactly I'll get around to using it, but I just thought it'd be helpful to help like improve my handwriting because I don't feel like my Korean handwriting is very nice to look at at the moment so but yeah I've held on to that one for a long time next I have two exercise books I also bought these on G market and I guess I don't need to pull them out they're for um, one is for like weight loss like training and then this one is just yoga stretching and they're 30 days of seven minute workout routines this book is Topic 2 Han Kwan Myon OK English Edition. I think it comes I think it comes in Chinese and Japanese. I'm not 100% sure, but I bought the English edition obviously uh, because I speak English and I really like the the layout of this book. I did an Instagram post about this um, and I didn't really have a chance to study it from study from it too much before my exam because I bought it really late. Um, but I plan to use it a lot more in the future because it's just it's really cool it gives you vocabulary grammar points that you should learn um, and then it also breaks down everything into question types and then um, it gives you example questions and practice questions and explanations for everything so it's really cool uh, the next book is a uh, well I guess it's just a writing book I'm gonna pull this one out So it's called Perfect Topic 2, and it's for writing, so it's got space in, in, in here to practice writing essays, because there are several essay questions in the topic test for topic, topic 2. And the thing that I really like is that they give you an example of um, A plus writing essay, a B essay, and a C essay, and then it also shows you real people's essays that they wrote for the topic exam and or I don't know if they actually use them on the exam or if they did these for like a practice exam or whatnot but any case in any case these are somebody else's real essays 
and they've kind of analyzed them and showed like mistakes or things that they could do differently. So I just think it'd be so cool to learn from with this one. And the last book on my shelf here is a book for the KIIP program. I've actually already finished the entire program and I don't need to keep this book. And it's a, a book put together by a different company, like a Hagwon company or something. And it's a guide for the final exam for that test. So I used that book when I was preparing for my test and um, it has some vocabulary, some grammar, and it has example questions and practice tests. And I just, I haven't gotten rid of it yet because I just feel like that I didn't really use it very much and there's so much useful information in there. Like even if I never have to take that exam again, like it's, it's still good to know about history, culture, society, as well as the grammar and, and vocabulary because that's what KIP is based on. It's, it's all aspects of Korean, um, life. So, yeah. Well, that's all of my books. This took a little bit longer than I anticipated, but um, hopefully it was interesting to you. I, I did want to kind of explain about each book, but yeah. So yeah, if you have any books that you like to use, uh, please leave them in the comments and leave some recommendations because I, I'm always on the lookout for other books, even though I obviously have too many. Um, yeah, but just leave a comment if you've got something good. And uh, that's it. I will see you in the next video. Bye. Thanks for watching.